Well, today I'm going to talk about uh, toenail laser. Uh, it's obviously a very interesting topic because being in a surgical practice, we see a lot of really serious conditions. But being as simple as it is, uh, really fungal infections of the toenails are very, very complicated because there is no 100% cure. And, you know, a lot of patients come in and ask me, hey doc, can you go ahead and remove my uh, toenail surgically? And I explain to them that unfortunately, the biggest concern is that according to the uh, study at the University of Texas, 98% uh, of the times if you remove the toenail and you do not kill the uh, nail root, you have a, a recurrence. So 98% chance of recurrence is obviously far uh, from what we desire to see. So a lot of the times when patients come in and uh, see me for this problem, uh, I sort of discourage them from uh, removing the toenail because if they don't do anything else and let the nail regrow, which takes about nine months to a year, uh, they will get the same uh, toenail back. Obviously the procedure is also quite uncomfortable. It takes a couple of weeks to a couple of months uh, for something like this to heal up and there are complication rates and infections with you know feet being not our cleanest part of the body. So what are the options for fungus? Uh, for the longest time I've been prescribing Lamisil, which is a great drug with complications. In fact, uh, liver function tests are required uh, for every patient that is on Lamisil more than 30 days. That's FDA. So uh, basically if I have a patient that comes in that wants to start on Lamisil or sometimes we use Spornox, which is a little bit older, also great drug, both are very expensive and a lot of insurances are now not covering it because they consider uh, fungus a cosmetic condition. So I've seen uh, generic Lamisil 90 day supply cost as high as eight, nine hundred dollars very expensive. If insurance covers it, it's great. A lot of the times before putting a patient on Lamisil, we will obtain a fungal culture of the nail, uh, send it to pathology, and basically only after the pathology report is positive, we will put somebody on Lamisil. Why uh, liver damage? It's pretty rare. Um, Lamisil is relatively safe, uh, but have I seen uh, abnormal liver function tests? Absolutely. In my 15 years of practice, unfortunately, I had numerous patients who had reactions to it, and a lot of the times you don't even know it until you do the next blood work. So of course a lot of my diabetics, I mean, I don't even want to risk putting them on Lamisil because there are side effects and we have to monitor them. Uh, obviously with a lot of people being on the hyperlipidemia drugs, uh, where they already have uh, liver function tests that are run every three months, we're sort of overloading the liver by putting them on an additional drug. So, uh, no easy answer. So I think that uh, the reason why I'm even doing this video is because uh, I'm very excited uh, to know that there are other alternatives that are very effective. In fact, uh, according to the studies, uh, a nail laser is more effective than Lamisil. Again, nail lasers are newer, so the studies are newer and uh, not as long as Lamisil studies. Lamisil is about 80% effective, depending on which study you read, and there are probably over 50 official studies, uh, double-blind, uh, randomized studies that are published at this point. Um, so topical antifungal medications, uh, I did not find them to be very effective. We've used PenLab for many years. Uh, it's outrageously expensive, and for a little bottle, you will be prepared to pay about $160 in a pharmacy. Uh, if your insurance covers it, you still tier three, very high copay, and the bottle does not last longer than uh, you know three months, maybe. Uh, if you actually read the insert that is in the bottle for PenLab, it's very interesting. I like reading the details of what's actually available to the patient right away. 18% rate of clearing the nail, they don't even call it curing the nail, clearing the nail with a very high chance of recurrence. So in my textbook, I really don't consider it as a cure or very effective treatment. Again, in the past, we used to be pretty desperate to treat onychomycosis which is the fungal infection of the nail. So we used to give it to patients uh, because we didn't have a choice. It was either Lamisil or Penlac. Uh, well, now we do. So what do we do at Central Florida Foot and Ankle? Um, basically, a lot of the times uh, we start patients on topical antifungal protocol. And it's a 
special package. Uh, it's three different um, products that the patient has to use, and they have to be compliant. And I think that I cannot even mention too many times how important it is for the patient to comply with the treatment, because if they start a topical antifungal but they use it once a month, it's not going to work. And they cannot blame the medication on, on it not working because really if they don't follow what I tell them to do or another physician tells them to do, it's not going to work. They probably should not waste their money. It's not going to work. They're not going to be happy. Uh, so what do we do? We give you uh, an antifungal topically to put on the nail and you use it twice a day and uh, yes it does work. Does it work 100% of the time? Absolutely not. Nothing is 100%. Um, so basically, if the patient does see the clearing, sometimes we don't even offer them a laser if they did great and the topical antifungal treatment worked. But a lot of the times, because topical antifungals only work about 50% of the time, and again, I'm quoting some of the uh, dermatological studies done in uh, dermatology literature, podiatry literature that is published. Um, and I guess there are mixed results depending on which study you look at. About 50% average effectiveness ra rate on topical antifungals. Uh, if it doesn't work, I think laser is a great option. No liver function tests, uh, $900 for a three month supply uh, is not there uh, in the pharmacy. And of course, the cost of a nail culture, because pretty much if I am risking putting somebody on Lamacil and risking their liver, I will run. Uh, a nail culture which costs a couple of hundred dollars minimum. Um, so basically uh, going back to the nail laser, uh, I'm very excited to know that there are better lasers now. For the longest time I have not even uh, purchased a laser for one specific reason. Uh, I do care about the reputation of our practice and I think that it is very important to offer the treatments that really re uh, produce uh, results uh, reproducible results where people come in they send patients uh, about 50% of our patients are referred by friends and family meaning that we have a very high return rate of the patients patients trust us trust us with doing our due diligence research and deciding what is the best treatment that we can offer therefore I waited for about six years and the pinpoint laser came out and I was really waiting for the FDA approved studies uh, not only in podiatric literature, but also in the dermatology literature to basically prove that it was worth the money to spend it and to get results that patients are going to be happy with. And I waited for about a year after Hypercure came out and I actually called uh, about five different physicians who've had it for about a year before I purchased the laser myself. Uh, the laser protocol is pretty straightforward, it's simple, you have to have three treatments, one month apart. Um, I recommend treating all the nails because the nails are in the shoes, so there's definitely an issue with cross-contamination. Uh, but going back to the patient compliance, patients still have to do their treatment at home. And an example is a contaminated fungal shoe. If I uh, perform a laser treatment on somebody and then they come back with negative results, we always start looking into why this treatment failed. And I can tell you that 99% of the time people do not listen to what I tell them. And the answer is very, very simple. If you have a shoe that has fungus in it and you put a perfectly healthy foot in it, I guarantee you're going to get an infection. So if a patient comes in and uh, pays $700 for three treatments um, and gets the laser to kill the fungus, but that puts that foot in a shoe that is full of the fungal infection, it's just a matter of time. Uh, and I think that's why even looking at the old Lamisil studies, I, I always said the same thing. If you don't treat the shoe, you're going to get a recurrence, whether you are going to take the pill whether you're going to do the topical antifungals or lasers. So it's extremely important to follow up at home, to still use the topical antifungals, to still use um, this shoe sprayer or the lamp. Of course, the lamp is much better, but a lot of people are concerned about the cost uh, because, you know, $700 to $800 for um, a laser is expensive. We charge uh, $699 for 10 nails. If patient only has one nail that is infected, we do go down on price. Uh, I also have to say that we are less expensive than Orlando or 
or Tampa. Uh, I believe that uh, Orlando, the current going price is 900. Uh, I actually talked to the colleague uh, in Texas this morning and it's $1,200 in Texas. So, I mean, again, the prices are variable. Uh, I'm talking about our machine that we have, which is Hyper, uh, Hyper Blue, right? Hyper Blue Laser. Um, because uh, there are different lasers out there. Uh, there are older lasers. There are some lasers that are recommended for um, hair removals, and uh, they unfortunately wrongly advertise them for uh, no nail fungus. And of course, they don't get the results that they want. But unfortunately, it is done in the industry, and that's why uh, I researched it for the longest time before I started offering it to patients. So I think that uh, I hope. Uh, I can educate my patients on what the process is and again it's a process of three treatments and I have a lot of snowbirds who come in and say hey I'm only here for a month can you just do one or two uh, I refuse to do it uh, to me uh, it's very important for the patient to understand that uh, we're here for the long haul and we want to be sure that there is a uh, definitely a clearing of the nail and the improving of the condition and I think it would really hurt them if they try to uh, cut the corners uh, sometimes uh, you have to uh, pay for the treatment that you get and you pay for the expertise uh, and I believe that at Central Florida Foot and Ankle we have an expertise dealing with this problem. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I think it's a very common uh, issue. I think it's a very difficult problem because there is no 100% cure and there is no consensus between uh, dermatologists, there is no consensus between all the podiatrists on what's the best cure the best treatment is, but there is one agreement. There is no 100% cure in any of the uh, treatments that in the United States uh, are available right now and are FDA cleared. So uh, I definitely encourage my patients to do a lot of homework, research it, understand what they are required to do at home in order to be successful in uh, conquering this problem. Uh, and uh, again, uh, if you want to schedule a consultation, I will be more than happy to talk to you. I will recommend probably obtaining a fungal culture uh, where we take a tiny piece of the nail and we send it out to a pathologist and they basically diagnose you to be sure that you have that condition. But with the staggering rates of 50% of adult population in the United States having this problem, I think that it's an infection that needs to be uh, managed, it's an infection that needs to be addressed and not let go because it does get worse. And I mean, I've seen cases in my practice where uh, we had to hospitalize the patients because yes, it's an infection and infections spread and sometimes they spread to the point of no return. Um, so uh, schedule an appointment if you have any questions, I think that uh, as of today, 2014, April, we do have the best laser available for this particular problem with an understanding that, yes, nothing is 100% guarantee and if the patient does not follow the instructions of uh, following through and uh, treating everything that they come in contact with, um, their rate of cure or uh, treatment with successful results that are satisfactory to both the physician and the patient are much lower.